Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. Guess what? It's time for Wonder again! Yes, the map that everyone knows and loves and is completely sick of, but it is currently the most played team game map other than Settens. Actually, it may be on par with Settens at this point, I'm not sure. It would be interesting to get the uh, statistics off the server for which map is played most. I would love to see that. This is probably number two or number three. I would imagine that the variations of the Wonder map probably are three out of the top ten maps played. It's probably Settens, then Thermo, then a couple of gap iterations. But anyway, that's all beside the point. Let's go ahead and introduce the teams. We will jump into this game. I've been informed that it is an epic. So we'll go ahead and enjoy all of the action that comes with this spammy map. We've got Zakizak taking Seraphim. My goodness, we've actually got some high-rated players in here. We've got Artifacts taking UEF. Ish playing Aeon, Jack Tequila taking UEF, and Maverick on UEF, tons of UEF on the Northern team. We've got Soviet Pride pushing the mid with his commander that is going to be able to grab that Omni for the ever important reclaim that you pick up early game. That is TA for life as Seraphim, Robert C as UEF, Tokido as Cybern, as he always does, and JMD as Cybern. So we've got a bunch of Cybern versus a bunch of UBF with a light smattering of other factions scattered around in there. Let's go ahead and bump it up just a couple notches and we will commence with the gameplay. Uh, we've got a little bit of a raid headed around on the left hand side here. Got some mech marines rounding the bend. But they are going to get spotted by those land scouts coming on the left there. Hopefully, um, Zok will be able to do something about them. Selen's going to engage. ACU's going to move southward, and that is going to be stopped very quickly. We've got, ooh, nice little skirt towards the northern side since he's been spotted. We've got another lab paired with a scout on this side. And air scouts pouring out of the factories from JMD, being a very good supporting air player and actually getting some T1 air out. The scouting is always helpful. Got an interceptor as well, so early bombers can be dealt with. These mech marines are actually doing much better than I thought they would. They are running around the back end of the base, already killed a couple of engineers, gonna snag another one, and scurry around towards the southern side of that base. Killing off engineers as they go and damaging mass extractors. That is painful when you have it happen to you. It is so annoying to have to go back and rebuild all that crap and deal with the damage and meh. It's just an aggravation. Got Mantis skirting around the right hand side now from Takedo. He is going to press every bit of an advantage as he can. Of course, versus the UEF, UEF gets stronger and Cybern gets weaker as the game goes on, so you're going to want to harass as much as possible to keep your teammate, or your opponent rather, weak. Looks like TA is going to press forward. This is one thing that is always awesome about the higher rank games. Um, the aggression is non-stop. There is always something going on. There's really not a whole lot of turtle potential when you're dealing with people. Uh, there's a few lower rank, but when you got a 2200, couple 17s, couple 18s in here, it generally turns into a good game. TA is going to pick up some veterancy on his ACU, knocking down tanks left and right. That is going to give him four kills, and all of these tanks have taken heavy damage. The gun upgrade is finished for Zaki Zog, though. That is going to give TA for life a whole lot of problems. Robert C is going to need to push his commander up to help out TA so that TA does not get overwhelmed and he's going to need to bring his units along with him because this ACU is going to vet quickly and they're going to need to deal with it and push it back as fast as they possibly can so that they don't lose their forward mass extractors on this side. Once you start collapsing to a push on Wonder, it is very hard to stop the push because once you get out of this narrow gap, the map just opens up and you've got all of this open area to access. We've got two ACUs on the southern side now. Artifacts has brought his commander as well. It does not have the gun upgrade. Actually, it has no upgrades, but it is more damage and health to bring to the fight. And TA for life is not looking very healthy, but he is building a point defense. He's got some Tech 1 engineers on the job. Uh, sadly, there's a lot of Zooies in this mix. Zaki Zaki is covering all of his bases and bringing along all the spam that he needs. 
He's got a couple of anti-air in here, courtesy of artifacts, but uh, it's not looking good at all for TA for Life. Down under 3,500 health. We have a transport headed around that is loaded with Medusas and is going to get around to the back end here. Looks like TA for Life is going to go down, and he does. TA for Life is out of the game. I love the Seraphim star animation. The nukes for every faction are different, and that is an awesome effect. Fire Beetles! What? Taquito pulling his customary Fire Beetle snipe right into Zok's face. That is going to eliminate the best player on the Northern team. So trading TA for life for Zaki Zok, not the worst deal you can make and that is going to stop the advance of the northern team. So we now got a four versus four. Takedo working his magic with that Tech 2 factory pushing Fire Beetle. So that was very well worth the Tech 2 upgrade for sure. This point defense here is in a bad spot. He built it with hills in between him and oncoming units. So those, uh, that Cerberus turret on the right hand side especially is pretty much useless, but the land did pick it up some. You can see when he started building the shield. Subcom does have a minor amount of terraforming. Um, it does flatten land to a certain extent to build certain objects. So it did pick that point defense up slightly. It may actually help it out significantly. Taquito's dropping an upgrade. That looks like the gun upgrade. He is minus nine, so that will be gun, I do believe. That is going to give him a bit of an assist against Maverick's commander which is pushed up dangerously far and is now shedding health rapidly. He does have the gun upgrade but he's down to 3500 health and he took a lot of fire from those tech 2 point defense. If Takedo can push his commander up, he's got his full 10,000 health, he may actually be able to kill, I don't know, there's some tech 1 point defense going down. He better not wander too far up in that direction. Looks like we've got triads going down for Robert C. He is slowly creeping his way up into the left-hand side over here. That is something that UEF is very good at. They do point, to creep, point defense creeps well. And I saw the other day in the forums that there was a discussion going on about how um, Tech 2 point defense needed to be re rebalanced because... Uh, point defense creep should never be a good strategy and yada yada yada. Honestly, I think Tech 2 point defense is probably one of the better balanced features of this game. Um, they are very solidly placed. They are weak against a dedicated mix of units. They are strong against a general mix of units. And they are not as mass effective as any mobile unit. So, UEF has exceptionally good point defense, and it, they're strong enough for a viable point defense creep with the assistance of more units, which Robert C. is actually executing pretty well right here. Um, but they are not, by any means, overpowered. So I actually love point defense. I do favor an occasional creep with UEF. That is a personal weakness of mine. I know a lot of people say that, oh, bring Kate's point defense under any circumstances. And that is actually not true. I hate misused point defense, and I think as a rule your gameplay improves when you don't use point defense. But that is not to say that you can never use it or that it is completely useless. We've got Tech 3 Air moving out onto the field. Ish pushing ASF at nearly the same time as JMD. JMD did get the scout out first. And it looks like uh, we have a little bit more production going on on the northern side. There's two to four ASF and one of them is going to go down and there's a strap bomber out for Ish. So I think the first ASF award goes to JMD but overall Ish is far, far stronger. He has 40 more eco and pulling twice as much power as JMD thanks to the double RAS on the Aeon Commander. And he is pushing, he's got his second strap bomber out, and overall is looking a lot more healthy. That strap bomber is going to come down laying fire on Robert C. Veteran C for the win. He got down to about 100, 200 health there. 
after that strap mom managed to kill a unit and that saved his commander but sadly he tried to micro out of the way of that but that strap bomber is going to take him out so it is now three versus four favor to the northern side and we've got two strap bombers fielded JMD is airlocked we got Sam's firing at least he did get the anti-air down that is gonna help his situation a lot but he's losing his build power here uh, strap bombers taking devastating hits on his engineers that's just making it harder and harder to get ASF back up in the air looks like air is pretty much gone to strap bombers we've got number five and six I think strap bombers out for ish circling around on the northern side of the map cleaning up these units and generally just hanging out getting ready for a strike at some location which has yet to be revealed Soviet pride's gone T3 he's pushing out tech 3 mobile artillery to both sides that is going to be a very good defensive measure and oh my I just realized there is only cyber and tech on the southern side that is not going to be pretty and there's a tack launch that is the lazy uh, UEF I thought that was Aeon for a second there but it does not have the serpentine pattern so silly me um, it is slow flying though slower than I thought it was you know what it is I'm usually playing at plus four and I'm only playing at plus two so it seems like everything is moving in slow motion that is what's going on got more trebuchets over here starting to lay down fire on this base now speaking of plus four versus plus two there is a poll in the description below for what kind of casts you prefer and for a long long time now I've been doing speed runs because speed runs are more convenient for me to do they're easier for me to do and I can push out on a daily release schedule but since I put that poll up 90% of the people who have actually clicked on it have said that they would prefer less casts per week and to do slow long games and that is honestly a huge surprise to me I, I did not expect that so if that is not an accurate subsect of the people who are watching this you definitely need to get down there and vote on that pool but at this point I don't think that that is going to change because the overwhelming majority of people I think there's about 70 people that voted and 90 percent of them are going for um, the epic style cast so I will change if that is the case and uh, it, it will pain me a little bit at first to go through at this speed but hopefully I will get the hang of it and fall more into the slower flow of things this is a strong commander over here we've got a shield tech 3 gun ACU and this is the kind of commander that makes you wish that you had a lot of bricks because large quantities of tech 3 units are really the only thing that's gonna make a dent in that overshield Maverick is going to be able to just run away and he still has about 75 percent of his health we've got a bunch of tech 2 gunships up here that are being pinged that was a ping from this team I think ASF are going to go up there, rip those in one pass, and then run back. So we got some damage on these, and several of them died. I don't know why JMD is not using his stealth. The stealth is the only good thing about the Cybern ASF, and he's not using it. So that is pretty, uh, pretty neglectful. Looks like we've got a Tech 2 transport being handed over to Takedo that is looking like another fire beetle snipe now whether or not he can be successful is a whole nother chapter in this story but it looks like we are going to get an attempt there are six strap bombers now it looks like they are saving up for a snipe got number seven building over here commander is very exposed on this side ish is in the middle of an upgrade unassisted and is standing clogged in a pile of tech one engineers so you could literally kill this ACU with three strap bombers and nobody could do anything about it well four it's 14,000 health my bad peoples I can't count 
Maverick is at 75% shield health and covered with a mobile shield. Here comes a transport. Looks like we got a drop and it's a little off. He's going to have to run. There go the beetles. And no, not even taking down the shield. Uh, yeah, his teammate saying, shield, that won't work. Taquito grinning away like a devil. Still got strap bombers on the northern side. We have to wait and see which target they pick. There's a scout over here, which I'm sure has just scouted this monkey lord that's building. Let's go ahead and take a peek. We've got mostly Tech 3 mass extractors in the back end. We've got that one T4 started. And another down here, finish. There are two monkey lords building or built for the southern team. Fire beetles headed up. They're actually going to get taken out by friendly T3 artillery fire. That is kind of sad. We've got a Galactic Colossus half built for Ish and not a whole lot else. Looks like that is that. They're building tech three point defense over here on this side. But that Monkey Lord is going to be able to skirt it. He's got flak. He's got air cover. He's got loyalists. This is going to be a tough one to stop right here. One thing that they do have going for them is that Maverick still has about 30% of his shield, 31% to be exact, 7,600 health total. That'll buy him two seconds of fire versus the Monkey Lord. Oh, no. Oh, okay. ASF are engaging the Strap Bombers. That is going to lead to a horrendous loss of ASF. JMD through the air game right there. Did not even kill all the strap bombers, but completely exposed his flank to those ASF. That was that was terrible to watch. I air fights like that depress me. That was a critical error that is going to come back to haunt the southern team because that is a loss of air control right before they make an experimental push, and that is something that you just do not want to have happen ever. We got a megalith building for, this is Soviet pride. Megalith is the next obvious step after Monkey Lord. Monkey Lord is the cheese make or break T4. And then the megalith is the solid overpowered T4. It has the reach, it has the damage to take out the other large direct fire units of uh, the other three factions. So uh, not going to see a whole lot out of these Monkey Lords I'm afraid unless they can team up and Yes, they are going to tag team the GC or run away together, whichever way. As long as they stay together, it's fine. They're actually going to get out of range of T3 point defense, which I do not blame them at all for because that T3 point defense is pro-level shred on those monkey lords. And GC is going to hang back, stay within the firing range of the tech 3 point defense. Very nice choices on the part of the northern team. We've actually got mercies online. What? You can't kill a Monkey Lord with mercies. They have built-in direct fire anti-air. That's not going to happen. We've got an Assault of Titans versus two lonely Cerberus turrets. Ah, nope, three. Well, four if you go that way. There's a couple of Tech 2 point defense on this side, but I think these T3 units are easily going to get past going to lose some mass extractors on this side and possibly a couple of other things doesn't look like there's going to be any heavy damage got another monkey lord building for taquito and he does have control of both of these on the right hand side so that's going to be three monkey lords and a megalith in just a second here got more going down and that is a nuke launcher in the works and on the northern side, the GC is done. Actually, that's a second GC. My bad. There's the first over there. Not a whole lot else planned. It looks like Ish is still operating on minimal power. He's got two extra T3 gens and one planned at some point. That was a Tech 3 upgrade going down on his commander. Built a T3 shield. Doing very well. Protecting himself against any potential strap bombers that might sneak through. Zakizak pointing out that now at this point, JMD actually has more production on air than Ish does. So Ish, even though he won air just a few minutes ago, I think JMD is actually back up to the level of Ish in ASF count. Let's actually take a peek at this. 
We've got uh, 43 on the southern side and 65 on the north. So about 20 short, but he's getting there. And he's also got some whalers. Megalith is going up to the front. That is going to lay down some fire on these Tech 3 point defense. He's going to take those out of the picture and allow these three spiders to have their way with this right side base. We've got two GCs heading in. Spiders need to get up and cover that Megalith. Megalith going to start firing at the GC. The spiders are moving up north to take care of this one. Looks like the GCs are going to focus fire the spider to try to take more damage out of the equation. But there is no way that they're going to win this. Megalith is going to drop one GC. Still got half health on the spider and three quarters on the Megalith. Spider going to lay down some damage. Gunship's coming in. There is the air engagement. JMD pulling a good move on that one. He managed to kill all the gunships with basically no losses on his ASF, drawing ASF away from the SAMs and over his own SAM installations. And the Megalith is going to win with 26k health left. And there's one Tech 3 point defense online over here. And there's the anti-air on the Megalith, wiping out ASF left and right. Very handy tool there. Always use your anti-air emplacements very well. Got more tech three point defense going up here. Actually killing those ASF netted a vet for this Megalith. It's gonna give him a bit of a health boost back up to 42k and he's gonna start moving northward. Although I don't think... What? Is it a Billy? It's a Billy! There's a Billy in the game! What? Okay, last cast. I had a Yolana Oss for the first time in a legitimate game. And now, this is the first time I've ever had a Billy in my cast. The Billy Nuke is on the field, useless though it be. We're going to get to see it fire away at some random places. Got to keep an eye out for that strategic launch detected ping. There it is again, trying to hit that Megalith. Megalith is going to sit just inside the damage ring here. It only does 12k damage, but when a Megalith is only at 20k health, uh, that is actually a decent amount. He could potentially kill both of those T4 right there if he could land it between them. The Billy... My goodness, that was a terrible voice break. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Um, the Billy is basically the ultimate definition of a cheese weapon. Um, it, it costs a huge amount, and it will strike fear into the hearts of any who see it, but it is actually incredibly easy to stop. All you gotta do is build, eh, five or six attack defense, um, as long as the billy isn't firing in front of the attack defense, if it's going over the top, I think you can stop it with four. And then all you have to do is build some tech two shields, I mean, you saw there were only two mass extractors killed there because of the shield cover and that was one tack defense two tack defenses there we go on a very long flyover those two tack defenses were able to kill it together so you can see it can be stopped the billy nuke is not the ultimate weapon by a very long shot but it is a hilarious one and Billy Nuke to the face, direct impact. There is a Billy killing a Megalith. I am very impressed with the aim on that one. All right. Not only do we get to see a Billy, we get to see a Billy take out the strongest direct fire T4. That is great. These Mercies are still online in the back. They're half out of fuel because they've been lazily circling and not really accomplishing anything. But they are still there. Are they stuck in the build queue, I wonder? I don't know. This is an interesting point defense AA emplacement. All right, the strat launcher is built. Nuke defense is almost loaded. Strat launcher is built, but is only about 5% loaded. But there is plus mass on the southern side. Throw some assistance on that son of a gun, and you'd have a nuke in about four minutes. But... Regardless, it is going to build quickly because eco balance is amazing like that. This is what we should all strive for is plus mass. Well, maybe not too much plus, but you know what I mean. 
not stalling mass is what I should say. We've got a megalith almost finished over here for that is Takedo. He needs to get it done. There's a GC almost to his base. Megalith's going to finish just in time. The Monkey Lord is going to take refuge inside the shield, pull a corner, circle back around to the Galactic Colossus, absorb some fire between all of the Cerberus turrets and the Megalith. That GC is going to go down very quickly. Actually, surprisingly quickly. And then here we can see the strength of the Trebuchet landing very large attack radius hits on this group of Percivals. They don't do a whole lot of damage per shot, but when you have that much area of effect, two or three hits softening up that many targets is a whole lot of accumulated damage. So good for those Tech 3 Mobile arty. That is how you're supposed to use them. That was a brilliant assault. But sadly, it failed thanks to that half-built megalith that was finished right before the GC pulled into base. Going to leave some reclaim on this side for the southern team now, so that is going to be recycled into something or another. We've got another megalith out for Soviet Price. Now we've got two megas on the south, and then it looks like we're about to have two fat boys on the north. So this is definitely turning into a T4 slugfest and it's about to have some nukes make a grand entrance. I don't see... Ah, there's nuke defense. And it's loaded. My goodness. I'm half blind in one eye and I can't see out of the other one. There is no nuke defense on this side that I can see. And there's a nuke defense, but it is not loaded. And Artifacts is heavily mass stalled. Well, he was heavily mass stalled. He's mass stalling when he's building the Billy. So I don't think he's going to be loading that nuke defense anytime soon. And he's launching that Billy. It, it is doing some damage to Experimental, so that's good. That one wasn't quite as spot on as his previous one, but that was still a good hit. And this Megalith is doomed. He is taking a whole lot of fire from Tech 3 Point Defense and from the Fatty, shedding about half his health. Here comes a Direct Impact Billy. I think it's Direct Impact, not quite right under the mandibles, but that is still going to be a hit nonetheless. About to hit red health level. Soviet Pride throwing some Rambo comms out to the front to assist that thing, but I think it is too late for that Megalith. That is about the time that you need to bring it back to base, control K it, and reclaim it to build another one. Alright, Soviet Pride has a nuke, apparently. He's talking about a nuke. Where is his nuke? Am I looking at it and not seeing it? There it is. Yes, I was. So he was nuking Gray. That is going to be out of reach in the nuke defense. It's over here. Is the comm going to make it? Yes. But sadly, the base is in shambles. But he did get the fat boy out. Now we've got another nuke going for red. Also out of range in the nuke defense. And that is going to get a commander. Jack Tequila is out of the game. That's going to eliminate his fat boy that he just brought online. I was really worried about having both those fat boys on, but I think with that one eliminated and these whalers coming in to beat down this fat boy, that is going to swing the game handily into the favor of the southern team. I think those two nukes might have just won it for them. The game is far from over. If these guys regroup, they still do have a chance. But that was some hard, hard hits to the, the uh, northern team. And this Megalith is still online, moving forwards, killing off these Percivals. There's a GC over to the left here. Percival does not have any veterancy. And actually at this point, ah, there's the veterancy. Now it will beat that GC. If it had not gotten that vet, the GC would have won. But there's also now some Rambo comms, so that is going to be a suicide mission for the GC should he choose to attack, and it looks like he is. Got drones online for Maverick. Maverick trying to throw down a fat boy, sending out the drones, getting that reclaim, 
and helping his team out with the overflow, I'm sure. Yes, he was overflowing. There was a full mass bar, still pulling 126 eco. That is pretty impressive, despite having his base newt. And that was a Billy. I was afraid that I missed an ACU explosion, but that was just a Billy. It's okay. Billy's home. Let's see, Rambo comms have been taken care of one by one, but they did do a lot of damage to that GC. GC versus Megalith, they have eh, close to the same damage, but the Megalith has a bit more range, and that is going to change it, though. There is the Strap Mommer Pass, going to suck a lot of the health off that Megalith, and it is still going to win. The advantage of the Megalith is its health. It's 110,000 health versus 90,000. Oh my word! It's a Skathis! Takedo has built a Skathis. And there's a bug online. The Billy is trying desperately to eat a hole into this base, but when you got a Skathis online, fronted by bouncers, and there is a good amount of air up from JMD here, so this is there. I don't think there's any major danger from air over here. This Skathis is going to wreck the map. You can see the range on that. Clear from the back of the base, it can reach most of the forward emplacements to wipe all of this defensive structure out. And then, of course, once it rolls forward a little bit, if they build, a, if they stick it in these shields or build another shield emplacement up here with some anti-air in front, it'll be able to reach the entire map. And then we also have, right over here on the left-hand side, there is a sneaky monkey lord that has slipped in on the left-hand side right into the middle of all of this T3 power. And that is a terrifying thing when you have a T4 in the middle of your power configuration, that is when you start saying, oh crap, oh crap, here comes the power stall. The worst thing that you can do in this game. I, I hate power stalls. I absolutely loathe power stalls with every fiber of my being. And it looks like artifacts, unless his team is supporting him. Nope, there it is. Power stall. That Monkey Lord was well worth it because even though he dropped the reclaim dead in the middle of Artifacts' base, Artifacts won't be able to use the reclaim for a fairly good period of time because he has to build the power to do so. Skathis is going to turn its attention. It moved forward slightly. There's not really any shielding around it, so I would be kind of scared that it's susceptible to air. And here comes the strats. Better group your ASF and get out there, and it is too late. That skate is nope. There was a hesitation. Going to get inside a shield. Where is it at? Got a nuke launch right over here. Looks like skate is going to take a couple hits. Strats denied, and just barely. Artifacts going down to that nuke. That was so close to an escape. That is going to finish the left-hand side over here. There are There is a single Oblivion turret defending the left-hand side. We do have this little configuration right here. Nice little fire base. I do like that. Oop, excuse me. I do like that little pattern there. That's kind of a cool one. But, and there's a nuke. Is there defense? That is the question. Yes, there is defense. That is GG right there. I don't think there's anything that the Northern team can do to come back from that situation. We've got spearheads moving in over here, got strap bombers headed southwards. Skathis is still under the protection of the shields, I don't think there's anything you can do to hurt it. it. Looks like some spread fire from the strats, not hitting anything important. Another nuke! Was the nuke defense killed? I think it was, and there goes the commander that was an epic game right there I love games that go that far and just have all kinds of crazy units in them that was pretty much the entire spectrum of Supreme Commander all the way from early deaths tech one spam 
and tack launchers at the eco all the way through to the other side with the biggest of the T4s slugging it out in the center and nukes flying back and forth. So that is Supreme Commander Epic Edition. Um, we've got Tech 1 Bomber Spam from JMD. Now, I would tempt it to be say to say under normal circumstances that this is a product of the desync, but I gotta say, I've actually done this before. I love killing people with Tech 1 Bombers. It is absolutely hysterical in my opinion, and it looks like the Monkey Lord is going to beat him to it. Tech 1 Bombers are amazing. I love using just huge, huge swarms of Tech 1 Bombers to fly over stuff. It's pretty, pretty fun. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap up this cast and uh, according to the poll that I threw out there last night, this was an epic. So there is a plus two max speed. That was a 36 and a half minute cast. So if this is what you prefer, I would be more than happy to do it for you guys. Um, just let me know. Again, go down to that poll in the description and leave your vote and I will see what I can do. If it does swing this way, what I will probably do is, um, if I don't have a long game like this, I will put two or three short games together into a related sequence um, so I can get those out to you guys. But it looks like that's the direction that this is gonna go. The people have spoken. Alrighty, I am out of here guys. Thank you so much for watching and for all the support that you give me I'm about to hit the six month mark and it has been phenomenal. Thank you guys. I will catch you later